Well, welcome to the Pyramid Science Foundation. Uh, we have with us today, well, this is Lisa Richards, of course, and Charlie Zeeves, but we have with us today, uh, Dina D'Antonio Smithson. And she has some great results she wants to share with us about her cat. Um, she's had one of our pyramids for the past couple months and she found some amazing uh, things out with the aggression of her cat and some coughing issues. And, you know, a lot of our, our followers here are animal lovers and the animals just gravitate towards the pyramid energy. We have so many people that send pictures and we share them on our Facebook page of their dogs sitting in there, their cats. And this is just an amazing story. And I would like to, I'm gonna hand this over to Dina now, if you can share with us uh, what you discovered. Sure, thank you, Lisa, and thank you, Charlie. Thanks for having me today. So um, I will refer to my reports because I have several of them, including an update from this morning. So um, my cat is 13 years old, it's a female. Her name is Salome, we call her Solly. Uh, she's always been a very, uh, more of the heightened sensitivity type of cat. You know, there's some cats that are more relaxed and then there's others that are really high strung and really aware. Um, and if you pet them a lot, they get kind of over sensitized. She's one of those. So um, I'll just read a little bit if that's okay off my, re my first report. Um, so the question was what conditions are being addressed in the session? And I put very angry cat, not tolerating the two other cats in the household. She's 13 years old and she developed asthma and an emotional upset after I acquired a new cat belonging to a friend who passed away last year. So I took this cat, uh, the new cat in, in August of 2020. And I went through the normal, you get, you know, normally you give them like six weeks or a little longer, whatever, to keep them separated, let them, the new cat and the established ones get to know each other. Uh, so, um, you know, I went through all of the normal things that you should do. I didn't just throw them together. I want to make that clear for the cat people out there, you know, might go, oh, well, that's why she reacted. And so she had, a, she had a chance to get to know the other cat through a screen where he was kept in a different part of the house. So finally, um, when Felix, Felix Spirit is his name, um, a big, beautiful uh, male, neutered male um, tuxedo kitty who had belonged to a friend of mine who passed, uh, he was integrated into the household and Solly just freaked. Uh, my other cat, Whiskers, who's younger, took to him very, very quickly and he to her. I mean, those two are buddies, they just love each other. But Solly just regressed. I mean, she um, wouldn't leave the bedroom for a month. She wouldn't get out of my bedroom. These cats can go in and out, they're indoor, outdoor, we live in the country. She developed uh, asthma soon after, she never had a coughing problem, never had a breathing problem. But after this new cat was in the house, she started um, coughing. So I took her to the vet and the vet said it's pre-asthma. I don't know what pre-asthma <laughs> pre is, but- They probably don't normal. either. <laughs> <laughs> pre-asthma, so I don't know. But she took x-rays and said that her bronchial tubes were kind of frayed looking. And, and um, so some time passed and uh, I did consult an animal communicator and I'm giving some information that's not even in my report here. And the animal communicator said that this cat had a past life where she was uh, caught by the throat by some very large animal. And because this other cat is really big, he's like 20 pounds, um, it, it kind of like sparked this fear, okay? Yeah. So um, she was getting a little bit more trusting around him. She would like, come up to him curiously and maybe sit near him. And then two very difficult things happened when, when he started going outside and establishing his territory. One day he decided to take a mouse away from her and he chased her up a tree, threw her out of the tree, to, uh, tossed with her in the bushes and that trauma, that completely destroyed the little bit of trust she was starting to have. I bet. And shortly after that, she became very reactive. The coughing got worse. And then he chased her up 
another a very large oak tree. And I heard her screaming, screaming. And I went outside and he had her on the very end of like almost knocking her off this very high oak tree. I called him down. Now, since then, he's very, he's never been reactive to her. I think he was establishing his position because she had been kind of nasty to him to begin with. So um, this relates to the frequencies that I used because uh, there was this past life thing, this predisposition to being a heightened sensitivity type of cat that she already is, trust being formed, trust broken twice. So uh, at that point, she just went down. She didn't want to get near him. All she'd have to do is see him across the room and she'd get all, um, you know, hissing and um, uh, arching her back. And if he passes her to go out the door, she'll attack him. And it just got, it escalated as it was getting to the point where it was just really awful because it was going on all the time. So I got the pyramid in July, but um, none of the cats really checked it out as far as, I mean, nobody was really attracted to it that much. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in, what was it? Uh, fairly recently, um, when I wrote the report in September, Took me a while to get my to get my caduceus <laughs> coil and everything figured out, but uh, in the first week of the second week of September, <clears throat> I first put the caduceus coil in here. I didn't have any frequencies running through it. Mm -hmm. Soon, I'm like within an hour after I had it in here, mm -hmm. she came into the pyramid for the first time that I ever noticed, <laughs> and and. Uh, hung out. I have a little bed under here for, for the cats and I have a chair with a pillow. Never really cared, never really checked it out until the caduceus coil was in here. When I saw that, um, I, I then, uh, you know, what I did was I, I put her in here. I picked her up and then I turned on a frequency that I played through it, which was four, which, um, 417. And I chose that frequency because of the history that I just explained about um, the trauma, you know, and the trust broken. So on this chart that I have, it says 417 is the second frequency of solfeggio frequency helps with the undoing of situations and facilitating change in our lives. It is said to alleviate the conscious and subconscious mind from traumatic experiences. So I've since been using it. Um, she's been coming in here on her own, especially when I have that frequency running. Um, she's now sleeping in 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 under the under the uh, the chair here where I'm sitting, the cat bed every night. Now she's on her own, sleeping in here. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. She just Sorry. went. Out. Kelly, can you share that picture? Of her cat, of Dina's cat, in the. I sure the can. Hold on. Let me get that. Uh, can you all see that? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so she's on the chair in this picture, but she sleeps in the bed under the chair every night. You said. Yep. Uh, in fact, that picture was taken. She had um, one day. She did lash out at him, at Felix, and I picked her up and she she doesn't like being picked up she's just like Arr! and the minute the second I put her on uh the pillow I wish I could have filmed this but you know it just happened spontaneously and I had the uh 417 going silently she's over here making little noises I don't know if you can hear she's down here in the, the pyramid base but the minute I the second I put her in, on this pillow she just like melted and got really quiet and just relaxed and stayed there for several hours wow. on the pillow, not sleeping, just kind of like her eyes just kind of got droopy and, you know, and um, stayed there for a long time yeah. and has since come back and on the pillow and, you know, or underneath either one.
Well, that's awesome. You know, every, they say cats are transformers of negative energy, but if a cat has negative energy, what's going to help them transform, you know, it, especially yes. if it's not liking the other cat. So that pyramid right. really, really is helping out in that aspect for her. And I do have a reading that I took. It's so sweet. She's right here inside the pyramid. You can't see her, but I don't know. Maybe I can. Oh, uh, no, probably not. She's, <laughs> she's joining us right now. She's oh, right here. Good. Uh, so one of the lower uh, Boba scale, trying to find it, readings I did when she was really aggressive one day. Um, <laughs> Let me see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I took, a, I took a reading of her when she had shown some aggression and it was at 8K. And then after spending some time in here, uh, when she, after she spent a couple hours in here and then jumped out, I took the reading again and it was at a hundred billion. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I have to say she's she's improving every day. Uh for instance, uh she was since since the other cat's been here and he sleeps on my bed with, with the other little kitty whiskers, she doesn't even want to go in the bedroom. She doesn't even, I mean, she used to like to come in there. Now she's starting to creep in there and check things. She'll look on the bed or she'll come and sit on the chair. It's like she's starting to test waters again that she was okay. previously, yeah. And so you'll notice, uh, you'll mm -hmm. probably notice her uh, wanting or allowing you to pick her up. You said that she doesn't like to be held, you know, but I feel that's something that she's going to enjoy and want soon as well. Yeah, she'll she will come sit on my lap if I'm sitting down like in the sofa on the sofa. She'll come on her own and sit on my lap, she, but she doesn't like being picked up. She'll squirm and you know, yeah. Yeah. make noises and such. But yeah, maybe that will change. Um, so 417 has been one of the ones that I've used a lot since that, you know, since I first uh, felt intuitively that was the one. And then I thought, well, last night, um, it was about 1 a.m. and I got up to, to go into the kitchen to get water and I took a peek and sure enough, she was sleeping in here. Yeah. So yeah. I, I went ahead and quietly hooked up my phone so that the frequencies could run through um, silently. And this, this time I used, what, oh, let's see. Um, sorry, <laughs> looking for my notes. So this time I used 639 because I thought, hmm, that might be a good one too. And 639 mm -hmm. is the fourth sulfedial frequency said to improve our connection and relationships with people around us. This includes healing strained relationships and creating new ones. Oh, so I, I did that, and this, and she was still in here at eight fifteen this morning. She was still, still in this with, with the frequency and just relaxed. And here's the thing: as soon as um, she got out of the, the little bed underneath here, uh, Felix came in, and he was just a few feet away from her. Now, normally, just looking at him, sometimes even if she hears me say his name, she'll oh. start hissing and you know puffing up and stuff she didn't do any of that this morning she looked over at him and just walked into the kitchen and didn't go <sighs> or anything <laughs> she didn't do any of that and she also didn't cough so um normal what had happened with this cough is that every morning she'd have the hack it was a morning cough and then every, and then we'd hear it sometimes later in the day Right. No cough this morning. Her coughing uh, overall has co almost completely gone away. She was doing it every day. Right. Like I said, typically in the morning, sometimes she'd do it a little bit later and there'd be this long hack that would go on. Um, I think the last 
cough that I heard was about 10 days ago. Wow. And it was very short, like, mm -hmm. you know, so the coughing, um, the fact that she didn't cough when she first got up as she had been doing for months, that in itself was amazing because the vet, you know, the vet wants me to use a steroid, which I didn't even give her. I just intuitively didn't want to even give it to her uh, when she was having the trouble. I just gave her herbs and Reiki and, you know, right. things like that. But but the pyramid and the frequencies, I, I feel based on the readings and, and just the observation right. have made a tremendous difference wow. in, in her, you know, attitude. Yeah. And with the call. Yeah. Well, you know, I feel if you would have, oh, go ahead, Charlie. I was just going to say, I, uh, I've taken um, classes on um, Louise Hayes' book, You Can Heal Your Life. Right. And so I, I think about things when you, when you mentioned asthma, uh, according to Louise's book, uh, asthma is the, uh, you know, I, I'm going by memory here, but it's basically a feeling of being suffocated or not being able to breathe in life fully and completely. So I, I kind of get the feeling that this definitely had something to do with feeling hemmed in or controlled or, or mm -hmm. that, that losing their freedom and so forth um, had yeah. a lot to do with that. And I mean, I've, I experienced that in my own life once uh, uh, when I moved back home after college and uh, the asthma from childhood returned and it wasn't wow. the pollen or anything in this. It was the fact that I was feeling like I couldn't express myself fully. Yeah, you know? constricted. Yeah, constricted. So I think that, you know, that that's not at all a shocker to me that 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 she would have that kind of a thing, maybe the coughing. Uh, mm -hmm. as well, congestion, uh, congested thinking, conge you know, uh, so all of that makes perfect sense to me. But it, it also makes sense to me that a specific frequency that has those kinds of characteristics or frequencies would be very, very beneficial to, uh, to healing those, those issues. So anyway, mm -hmm. just some observations. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, you know, the fact that she didn't have an issue like that until after this cat came in, they had their scuffles outside, their little territory things. Right, right. He didn't like the fact that he's bigger going, you know, um, I'm going to hunt here too. Mm -hmm. and then whatever, right. whatever, took her mouse away one day. But I have to say, he's been very, um, uh, he's been, he's been really, since, since those little incidents, he, he hasn't been, uh, reacting back at her at all she can lash out at him all she wants even catching him a few times in the face which kind of scared me because I don't want to have you know have an eye issue sure sure he doesn't respond he just walks away yeah and I was thinking yeah. wow I wish I could do that you know <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could be that evolved when somebody lashes out at me right, um, right. yeah so um I've also seen her since since she's been coming in the pyramid, uh, hanging out with them outside on her own on the deck. We have a deck right outside these, this room. Um, and she could go anywhere, right? She could, she could be anywhere out there. She could be anywhere on the deck she wants to go. But he'll be there and she'll be like a foot away from him, just relaxing the two of them. So she's... She's stepping into her power again. You know, that's yeah. what throat chakra issues are. It's, you know, speaking, not only speaking your truth, but realizing your own truth as well. So, you know, she was taken aback by him at first and uh, kind of got lost in that, I think, for a while. And now she's able to express herself again. And that's really freeing her up for a lot of this. You yeah. Know, the, pyramids, the pyramid has helped her. And I think if he would have given her the steroids, since she's inside the pyramid all the time, it would have uh, not done anything anyway. You know, yeah. it would have just neutralized the toxicity and balanced her back out, just like the pyramid did in the first place, but probably would have taken longer because now it has to fight against uh, the extra toxins in her from the steroid. Right. You know, 
she really i wish you could see it um like i said when that time when she lashed out at him and i i i picked her up and she's <laughs> and i stuck her here and the minute she got into this energy field she just got really quiet she could have jumped down and run off petulantly or you know she didn't she she just settled in and just stayed here for a few hours and i check on her and her face had this little very zen like expression yeah it's amazing and, and i have i'd like to say this um Years ago, my late husband and I worked in animal welfare as volunteers. We did grant writing and fundraising, and we, we also did um, help to get animals adopted for the local shelters with off-site adoptions and took in animals ourselves and did foster. We did a lot of that. And, and, and a lot of what gets animals into shelters and gets them put down is behavioral problems. Yeah. So I had this vision this morning when I was in the pyramid <laughs> meditating. Um, I had this vision, you know, we're moving into this new paradigm, I believe. Mm -hmm. Moving into a new paradigm. Um, we're at the, right at the advent of it, I, I feel. And I just saw, you know, what if animal shelters had a Russian pyramid <laughs> yeah where, where the animals you know shaped like that or or yeah. even a behavioral or room where they let's say traumatized animals or you know whatever could, could spend time in in a russian pyramid yeah 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 and and the behavior is the same kind of people that work with them and so forth could still work with them but they'd have that added energy sure sure utilize, um yeah you know, the issues that eventually get them being brought. I know with one of the shelters, you know, it was, it was really sad in Arizona, but if they got back, got returned three times, that was it. They were on the E-list. Oh, so list. something that might be a little more simple for that would be just charging water in a pyramid and feeding there, that to all yeah. the shelter animals, you know, and calming them all because it's so chaotic with all the barking and the noises and the people coming in and out. And yes. you know, that might even just calm them a little more. Just they that might, alone, yeah. Yeah, they might just be, you know, scared of new things at that point and intimidated by a structure they've never seen before. So they might not want to go in at first, but right. yeah, that would even help a lot more. But you even said you have goats too. It would be amazing to see their reaction to a pyramid and how they would, you know, experience they it. They tried to chew on it. <laughs> I'm sure. Not eat it, but chew it. <laughs> well, I, what I was thinking, though, when I was thinking of that, I was actually thinking of like a, a building, like the animal shelters with the pyramid. Oh, yeah. Shelter. Like the hospital Char Charlie showed. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. That would be that would be an amazing uh, experiment yeah. for sure. But obviously the water would be the simplest. Water or if you could get get a even a pyramid like this in a room that they might have access to and and play the frequencies through the coil it would be yes. silent and you mm -hmm. could just have them see if by putting you know i don't know if they have a common area where they let <laughs> the, the animals out for a little exercise or something but you know if they have a room like that where they could get exposure it might be interesting to see what it what it does it certainly affected uh uh, the 20,000 prisoners who were fed table salt in Russia, you know, right. it, 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 it eliminated violent behavior in their prison system. So I, I would imagine that it would have similar socialization improvements for animals as well. So be an interesting, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, an interesting uh, project. So, uh, so have you noticed any changes with your other cat, the, the one that you brought in? Um, the newer cat. I've noticed that he has noticed her being more relaxed. Okay. Uh, because he's used to having her be so reactive. Like last night, uh, I had the the um, uh, amplifier on, and I know you mentioned that the amplifier is usually used for like thirty minutes. Yeah. Right. It's just it's what yeah. I do, but I, I, I leave mine on all the time. <laughs> 
in the bedroom. I, I forgot about it. It was on for two hours. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Leave it on all the time. So all the cats, and I, and I didn't speak much about Whiskers. She's the little one. She's afraid of her because when this one gets afraid of the other one, she takes out her aggression, sometimes chases the little, the little, little girl, Whiskers, <laughs> who's like six pounds. Sounds, um, sounds familiar with humans, too. <laughs> yeah. Transfer it, right? That's right. That's right. So I had forgotten I had the um, 417 on, on amplification, and all of them were in here, and everybody was just kind of hanging out within a foot of each other, yeah. waiting for me to give them their food, and there was no, it was normal. Yes, yeah, no animosity, yeah. So wow, that's what great. I can say about the other two is that it was just all more more relaxed because the yeah. other two got a little a little gun shy of her, right? Not wanting to get too close or oh, if they want to come in or out, you know, uh, they'll look at me like, "Can you get her out of the way so I can come in?" <laughs> Some of that I've seen that relaxing with sure. them. Will they come into the pyramid? The other two. I've only seen Whiskers, the little girl, um, the young one, come in and hang out around the base. She's yeah. like kind of, I've not seen them sleeping in here. I've not seen Felix or Whiskers actually sleeping in here. I've just seen them kind of come into the base and check these out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. The only one that really, really gravitates is the one that seems to be needing it the most well th that was kind of why why i'm asking those questions i'm wondering whether the animals don't have an instinctive ability to know what they need and be gravitated to be drawn to it so in other words if the other two are not feeling hostile uh they may not feel a need to be there or to to to, to partake of that but i mean we generally you know it seems like if if we listen to our in intuition we are naturally guided to what we need so maybe they are I, I will say that the other two do like to um hang out in this in this room which is the dining room yeah the pyramids in the dining room it's where i found the best place to put it mm -hmm. and even if they're not in it they do i'm like you said the energy will still come out beyond the oh, pyramid sure. right okay sure, absolutely For so they a spend distance. a lot of time in here yeah well it may be too powerful inside. I don't know, but yeah, it, there's definitely an improve, an enhancement in the energy field for a great distance around. So that that could be it. Yeah. Well. So cool. You see, you didn't sure get like, I'm sorry. You didn't, you didn't get this pyramid originally for the cats. This is just something you discovered after you purchased right, it. Right, right. I originally got it um, to use in my past life regression and between life regression work. So that um, uh, my, uh, this is where I want to sit. Uh, like I, I had mentioned before we, we started taping, I um, took a break from it. I'm going to be starting up again um, at the end of October, uh, taking, you know, uh, clients for that. But this is where I want to sit to do the remote uh, right. sessions where I can facilitate from here right because i can do remote sessions in past life and then i have one in my um uh, healing room over the bed the, where the people lay when they right. when they get regression work done so um yeah that was my my intent uh, but here we are you know healing animals with it oh it's that's yeah. fantastic well you know we'll love to have you back once you've started back your past life regression work and you can uh, yeah. tell us about that cool. as well but uh do you yeah. have any closing comments uh dina that you want to give to the group uh before we finish off here um well i i was thinking of also um yeah, I was I was thinking also of, of putting, you know, the idea of putting maybe a picture of an animal if it can't be present mm -hmm. and and seeing how that would work with some people in the community. I haven't actually put the word out. Right. But I'm, you know, wondering if maybe intention with Reiki and putting the picture of the of the animal, if mm -hmm. they can't physically be in the pyramid, that might even help. 
That would definitely but work. I would recommend it to anyone uh, since it's it's really helped my kitty. Yeah, I feel yeah. I, not just feel. I've seen it, so I've seen the I've seen it. <laughs> so yeah, right, right, um, right. You know, when you have a year long of behavioral issues getting worse, uh, physical coughing getting worse, mm -hmm. and then you see it abate um, in a in a short time. It kind of gets your attention. And animals, you know, there are fur babies and they have such short lifespans. You know, something like this is going to be really important to an animal lover. Yes. And another thing I'd like to say about animals is I feel like, um, you know, with animals and children, whenever you have results of studies, I think those results are probably the purest because they don't really have any preconceived true ideas about how it's going to work or you right. know belief systems that a lot of times um you know adult humans would have right. so um yeah so i i would recommend anyone with animals um please try this and uh you know see if it can help your your animal yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing this today, Dina. That's really impressive, and I'm sure a lot of people will get a lot of help out of this. Yeah, and I'd like to let people know with regard to the other things I, I want to do with Past Life to check out my website if they are interested in oh, trying, trying this with uh, the pyramid. And, and why don't you give us that information so we can put it up on the screen? Oh, um, my website? Dot yeah. com. Past Past life flight. Past life flight and I call my practice White Owl Wisdom Past Life Journeys. Okay. Past life flight .com. All right. Well, we're showing that up on the screen now, Dina. So oh, good. Hopefully, Thank you. Hopefully, yeah. people will uh, be able to uh, get in touch with you uh, regarding that, and maybe uh, their your experiences with your with your pets as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to, um, if someone doesn't have a pyramid, I'd love to have them send me a picture and I'll put uh, their picture in here, you know, just, and we can see how it, just to oh, see wow. how it goes, just as part of the uh, survey. It's amazing. Great idea. Know? Great idea. Yeah. Okay. Thank you both. All right. Thank, thank you, you for being here. Yeah. yeah. Was another episode, great episode from the Pyramid Science Foundation. Thank you for joining us. Everyone thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.